Hello everybody, my name is Kai Wehner and I work as technology evangelist for TIPCO. Today I want to present you an update about Project Logo. This is in the end the same session which I did at GoFarCon, which is a Golang powered conference, um, this time in Pune, India. And date is February 2017. So what is Flogo? Let's begin with the key takeaways of this open source project. It is an ultra lightweight integration framework powered by the Go programming language, especially for IoT scenarios where you need lightweight integration services. It is open source under a very permissive license, so you can do it with that whatever you want, and it is easily extendable, as you will also see in this presentation. It is used especially for IoT Edge applications, but you can also use it for other things like building lightweight microservices or even serverless applications. And very important, it is complementary to other integration solutions and IoT cloud platforms. At the end, for example, I will show how you use it together with AWS or Google's IoT platform. The agenda for this session, um, first I will give a short motivation why we need these lightweight edge applications for IoT scenarios. And then I will show you Flogo and its use cases, talk about the source code and give a live demo. And in the end I will talk how it is related to other IoT platforms. Let's first think about the motivation, why do you need IoT edge applications? Well, um, the Internet of Things, um, probably everybody of you knows what that means. It's an ever-growing network of visible objects. They feature an IP address for Internet connectivity, often, however, with uh, low bandwidth or other latency issues, communication problems. And not everything is very good connected via a Wi-Fi or so. And um, this is in the end the Internet of Things and you have many different devices and things, sensors and so on which have to communicate with each other. If you trust the analysts and often they are know what they are saying, so for example here we have a statement of Gartner about IoT integration and they say that through 2018, so one year from now, half the cost of implementing IoT solutions will be spent on integration. And that somehow makes sense because you have all these devices deployed somewhere at the edge and if they cannot communicate with other devices or with some cloud services then what's the benefit? So this is probably true. And therefore without integration there is no Internet of Things. That's a very important uh, understanding so that you know that when you want to do IoT projects you have to integrate these devices also with other things or services. This is the basic motivation and that's especially important therefore also for edge applications that you can do integrations also at the edge as we will see later in the use cases in more detail. But let's first now take a look at Flogo which was built to develop IoT edge applications. Flogo is available since October 2016 so it's still a very very young project and in the end it's its first um, developer release. So you can see it under flogo.io and you can also access the source code on GitHub. Here are the basic concepts. In the end Flogo is an integration framework where you can build lightweight integration microservices. And on the left side you see the web UI. Um, all you see here you can also write it with command line or with just Go code. Um, if you um, want to use the web UI it's also available. And here in the end you build complete Flogo apps and these um, typically contain triggers um, which initiate a process or flow. Um, this can be a timer or something like an MQTT or a co-op message. And then you do transformations and filtering and other um, orchestration and rerouting and these services and features to build these integration flows using other activities here. You also have error handling um, to check if there is a problem of course. This is the basic idea um, on a pretty high level how you build Flogo IoT microservices for integration scenarios. What's very important to understand is Flogo is a process engine. So what does that mean? You, as I said, wire together hardware devices, APIs and online services. You leverage integration and orchestration uh, features to, to transformations, filtering and so on. And you use synchronous and asynchronous communication. 
However, it's also about state management, your state and flow services. So um, this is also about things like error handling, retrying, rerouting, waiting and resuming. And this is important in IoT for things like device activation or diagnostics, performance management or recurring from faults. So there's a lot of scenarios where you really need state and this is what a process engine can help you. Also if you integrate many different devices and sensors and other things so um, the key point here is this is not just a data flow pipeline. So there are other IoT frameworks that you can use, for example, Apache NiFi or StreamSets. If you want to just ingest sensor data from IoT devices to the cloud, for example. Um, that's perfect, but that's another scenario. That's more or less streaming ETL processes. What we want to do with Flogo is really a process engine where you can do much more and orchestrate things at the edge via Flogo. That's the key point of it. And also important, Flogo is highly optimized for unreliable IoT environments. So you have an ultra lightweight footprint. That's one reason why we used Go. And therefore you can build lightweight edge devices. That means both disk requirements and memory requirements. Also important, you have a zero dependency model. So you do not have all the issues, for example, as with Java, um, where you have all these different libraries and have to think about how you manage that. Especially on a small IoT device, that's even more important. And you also have a very nice web native remote debugger. That means um, that you can use the web UI and debug your remote applications without rebuilding or recompiling the source code for this application which you deploy at the edge. So you can deploy it at the edge and debug it there. That's also very relevant, especially for IoT devices, where it is not as easy to debug things like it is in a typical Java application. So this is Flogo and when do you want to use it? In the end we really built it for um, IoT Edge applications as I discussed with you. This is true for both consumer and industrial IoT. So consumer IoT is things like the smart home and you connect your refrigerator or your TV and many other devices. Industrial IoT is more about manufacturing and finding failures and production and assembly lines and so on. But there is a lot of different use cases where you can uh, use Logo. And one important thing here, and I really love this presentation, it's called the end of cloud computing. It's a little bit an aggressive presentation, but I can really recommend to watch this video. And there um, this, this research guy talks about um, the evolution. And here you see that we started with the mainframes, um, which was uh, central here. And then we went to the distributed client server architectures until the year 2000 or so. And then we moved to mobile and cloud communication, which was centralized again. And this is, of course, still true. And so we put all our things again on Amazon or Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud Platform or in our own data centers. And as with all these Internet of Things and these many, many billions of devices, we will have to go back to edge communication again, so distributed. You cannot send all the information from all these devices back to the central server or cloud because that's way too expensive and takes too long for all this information of billions of devices. And therefore edge processing is getting more and more important again. And that's one of these big use cases for Flogo to deploy it at the edge where the devices are located. So some vendors call this fog computing, others call this edge computing. But the key point really is, as I just explained, explained of course you have this cloud computing where you do your central um, applications and services, but you want to do some uh, uh, computation and aggregation and filtering and other logic like controlling devices at the edge. So this is applications which are deployed, deployed closer. So for example in your home or at the assembly line in a room and therefore um, this is what in the end what is fog computing and of course these devices also communicate with the cloud but not for every single control action or for sending every information and that's the key difference here and so you want to really keep the data closer to the edge and the benefits are local control which is more reliable um, you have less traffic and therefore lower costs and therefore edge integration and even processing and analytics at the edge device will get more and more important. So this is basically the use case we talk about today in this session. Um, in addition to that, 
as we build Flogo that lightweight with so low resource requirements, of course you can do other cool things with that. Especially you can build um, lightweight microservices. For example, deployed in the public cloud or in containers on a platform as a service like Kubernetes or Cloud Foundry. Or even you can use serverless architectures because here a Java application or a JavaScript code is uh, taking too much resource time for getting started, for recompiling, for using memory and disk space. And here um, Flogo is perfect because it's so lightweight. And these are simply some other options where we will see more about Flogo in the future. Today we focus mostly on the IoT scenarios of Flogo. Let's now talk a little bit about um, why we choose Go for implementing most parts of Flogo. Go is a very modern language, um, which is pretty cool, and it's really built for for doing things, uh, not really web applications or so, but building more of these things which you do um, infrastructure stuff, like Docker or Kubernetes are built with Go, and also Flogo. It has built concurrency into the language with Go routines and channels, and therefore you do not need explicit thread programming like you do, for example, with Java or C Sharp. Memory management, it has a modern garbage collector. People using Java or so know what that is and, and use it for, for some time already. Um, but um, if you do really low level coding um, with lightweight uh, programming languages like C, for example, there is no garbage collector. So there you have the pointers and memory allocation. And this is a huge benefit here. Uh, that's one of my key points. It's statically typed. I do not write code so much and therefore type safe development with no surprises during runtime, which you have with JavaScript or Ruby. Um, this is very important. It's partly object oriented, so it's a simple and flexible type system, but for example, does use only composition instead of inheritance, which makes um, coding much easier. A key point for Fluga, however, is really the zero dependency programming model that you have all included in one binary file and no dependencies, like in Java, for example. That's especially important if you need to deploy it on small devices, which are not that flexible and you cannot deploy so many different things easily. And the key point, however, is speed of Golang. Ultra-fast compilation and startup times and a very lightweight footprint regarding disk and memory requirements. That's the key point why we really use Golang here. And that's a key difference to other IoT integration frameworks. Here is one comparison uh, for resource requirements of some examples. You see Eclipse Cura, which is based on Java platform. You see Node-RED, which is based on JavaScript and Node.js, and Flogo with Golang. And here you simply see some comparisons of disk space and memory, and also startup times and, and application build. And um, that's simply huge differences, especially if you want to deploy something on very small devices without less uh, memory re low memory requirements. Here is the source code of Flogo. Um, it's a few repositories for the core libraries and some baking services for managing state and flows. You have the contrib um, project where you have the connectors and activities for connecting to different technologies. And you have the command line project um, which is also implemented in Go. All this can be found on GitHub under the very permissive open source BSD license. And we also have the Flogo web designer available for free, so you can get this as a Docker image and run it um, and do with that whatever you want. I also created a short 15 minute video about how to build a custom adapter for Flogo. Here I built an adapter for Apache Kafka and this simply shows in a few minutes how easy it is to extend Flogo um, to use it either just with Go code or then also in a web UI and enhancing it with your own custom code. Let's now talk, take a look at um, a live demo for Flogo to see how that works in action and what that means. So here you see um, the web UI of Flogo. This is in the end how you can do the, the web development if you want to use the designer. Here um, in the background I have um, the web application already running. This is not built in Go, this is built with JavaScript, um, which is typical for web applications. And there we don't need these um, lightweight requirements. And as you can see here, at the end it's one Docker image here. Um, I use the Flogo web image here. And um, if you take Docker PS, I already have this one running here. And that's all you need. It includes all for the development. 
So let's develop a very simple flow with Flowgo, a hello world flow, just so that you this one exists already. So um, let's say Pune because I'm in Pune right now for Gafacon to present this. And now um, let's develop a very simple flow. Here, this is really just so that you get a feeling about how to do that. You design your processes by starting with a trigger. For example, you could use a messaging for initiating a process or an HTTP message or any custom connector. In this case, I'm just using a timer um, to start a new process. And also, instead of doing much processing here, in the first example, I just do a log message, which I configure here to show some output, hello, um, here, hello world from Pune, and that's it. I save it and I run from the trigger and it already compiled because that's very fast with Go. And as you see here in blue, it's already executed. And you can see here the output hello world from Pune with a flow instance ID. That's a very simple hello world example. We will see more sophisticated examples in a few minutes. Let's first take a short look at the source code of that so that you see what's going on under the hood. Um, here in my source code, I have all the code from the um, Flogo project here. It's under Tipco software. I checked it out from GitHub. So here basically you have um, the, um, the lib, which is the core engine of Flogo with some source code here. As you can see, it's um, so not so much. It's a few classes um, which you use to implement the runners and the engine and so on. And then um, we also have other projects here. So um, you have the contrib project, which is there for all these connectors and activities. Here you have the triggers for MQTT or co-op to start a new message. Or also we have, um, oops, let's go back once. Um, we have the activities where you can do processing like filter or like sending message tests to other devices or to the cloud, for example. Um, I, here I will also show you one example which I implemented in my, as discussed in my Kafka example. So um, here we see I have created my own project to create a Kafka example. And this um, is a very simple code um, which I created. So I used another connector as template. And then I simply use the Kafka libraries here in Go language. And I write some code um, to connect to a Kafka cluster. And um, then the producer can send some messages here. So it's only a few lines of code how you create your own connector and also how you do the unit testing with the out of the box features which are built in into Go. So that's pretty easy for getting started to build your own customizations. Besides that, we also have two more projects here. Um, here you see um, we also have the services um, projects. This is for flow and state and um, doing persistence. Here, as you can see, we use currently Redis as database, no SQL database, and here is the package import so that we can store uh, state. And then um, finally, we also have the CLI package. This is where we implement our command line interface. And as you can see, um, this is also implemented in Go itself. That's basically just a very short look at the source code that you understand what's going on under the hood. Let's go back to the web application and see two more sophisticated demos. First, I will go to the weather service. The weather service is in the end an HTTP service um, which does using an external um, weather request here. Um, it's a get um, a get implement a get verb of the REST service, and then we return the response of this weather service to our invoker, and that's basically all it does. Um, however, here um, you can also see some more advanced features like the transformation, where we can map from any input um, component to the output. So here you see an activity before and then you can do graphical mapping to map um, something like a message or content to an output to the next activity in the flow. So you do not write code here if you do not want to. I can execute this REST service here and in this case um, as a city in this example I have added Erlangen which is my hometown in Germany. 
and we see here as return value right now the temperature is 16 degrees Celsius. So this is how to execute a more complex service and then of course you also want to export the service. You can export it to any binary which is supported by the Go programming language. I now exported it for my Mac so that I can run it locally and so here you can see um, I go to my command line and I am in this folder here and what I have here is this binary which is the weather service and I want to now execute it uh, and you see how quickly that starts that's one of the big advantages of Go 2 compared to Java or JavaScript and now it's already started and I can access this REST service here and so let's do a simple call in this case I am in Pune and so now let's ask what's the weather in Pune and here we see here it's now 25 degrees Celsius and um, that's already not too warm anymore because I'm doing this recording in the evening of Pune time because on the day it has around 40 degrees Celsius. But here you see now also on the command line that this worked and my running process here returned the weather in Pune. So let's close this process and show you one more advanced example which is um, the pet example. This is using the pet REST service of Swagger. Um, in this case um, I can ask um, a Swagger pet store to get information. And in this case I'm searching for pet with the ID 222. So this is a REST service which is deployed by Swagger and we can see this pet exists here with some content. And now we go to our Flogo process, which in the end is again a REST service which I can execute. And this does some um, integration things like content-based routing, where you decide if the pad is already existing, then we delete it. We are um, the delete command here of the REST application. Or if it does not exist, then we create a new pad. So let's execute the service here once. And now we see the pad is already existing, as we have seen here. So it chooses the content-based router to decide to delete the pad. So if we now double check in Swagger and try it out again, the pad is not found here. And that's correct because we just deleted it. And now we can run it again and it will create the pad again. This is one of the cool features I want to show you also for uh, Flogo. It's the web native debugger which you can use. So without restarting or recompiling you can do changes here in the configuration and also start and test from within the process. So I do not need to start from the beginning but can start within here and run from this tile. And now it just runs from here and executes the create pet functionality. As you can see here, let's try it out again and our pet exists again. And so that's really a key point also, especially in more complex IoT integration projects. You do not want to restart all the activities um, or again. And also you can do the remote debugging with this. So you can deploy your application at the edge device and then remotely debug it here within a debugger and do just step-by-step -step debugging here and restarting or re doing it from here without any kind of redeployment or restarting. And that's very important for IoT Edge development again. So that's basically the examples I wanted to show you. Let's go back to the presentation and finally talk about how Flogo is related to IoT uh, platforms. So here I use AWS, Amazon IoT reference architecture. You see here Amazon has a lot of great features for authentication, security features, um, a rules engine, device shadows and so on. And on the left side you see in the end where you would use Flogo. You would use Flogo to develop edge applications. This can either be deployed on an IoT gateway somewhere at the edge but also at the lightweight edge devices where something like a Java application like Eclipse IoT or something like Node-RED based on JavaScript is too resource hungry and that's one of the key points why Flogo makes so much sense for IoT edge applications. By the way on the other side here, here you use the typical um, core integration middleware in, in Tipco's case Businessworks or an open source framework like Apache Camel for example to build integration services in the cloud or on-premise. The same is true for many other reference architectures. So here we see the Google reference architecture for IoT. And so here you see again you could use Flogo for both for building 
edge applications at the gateway, but also at the much less resource hungry and less powerful edge devices. And here the, you get the key benefit of Flogo, which is so lightweight, powered by Go. And one other example, just um, for your reference, uh, showing a serverless architecture with OpenWhisk, um, with OpenWhisk an open source framework by, by IBM. Here you can run, um, for example, also Docker containers. But here it's also important how lightweight um, Flogo is compared to Java or JavaScript solutions. Because here you really pay for every kind of memory and disk space. And so here you could use uh, Flogo for the edge gateway, for the lightweight edge device or sensors and also inside OpenWhisk as serverless service. That's also a great other example of using Flogo. So let's summarize this by taking a look again at the key takeaways. Flogo is an ultra lightweight integration framework powered by Golang. It is open source and easily extendable as you have seen with um, how to build an Apache Kafka connector. It is used especially right now to develop IoT Edge applications, which have to be very lightweight and um, with low memory consumption. However, we can also use it in many other use cases like building lightweight cloud services or even serverless architectures. And finally, as you have seen, it's complementary to other integration solutions. So it's still valid to use Node-RED or Eclipse IoT in some scenarios, but Flogo is simply in scenarios where these do not fit or if you want to like to do something with Go. And you can combine it with all these IoT platforms. One outlook before I close, um, what you will see very soon from us is also an enhancement for Flogo, so that you can really na run Flogo Nano service on even more lightweight sensors and devices like microcontrollers. So here you see um, you do not have really max of memory RAM, but really a few kilobyte. And therefore what we are working on is that you can run some parts of Flogo on these very, very, very small microcontrollers. And these can then be connected to a Flogo deployment on a bit, little bit bigger device. This is what will come soon also for Flogo. With that, I want to close the session. If you have any feedback, please do a comment or contact me via LinkedIn, email or Twitter. And thanks for watching.